Welcome back, everyone. I'm Cuthbert Langley along with Sheriff Darren Hall on this Monday morning. And for Nick Bears, we are having a good conversation about the holidays coming up and all the programs they are doing to try to uh, keep uh, drunk driving from happening around town. A lot of great things to get to this morning. We do have one caller right now. Ann is on the line with us. Good morning, Ann. What's your question? Good morning. It's not a question, but I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank Darren Hall. Back in October, after a two-year battle, I called in, and he took interest in a community problem that my area had been battling, and by the end of October, my neighbors and I had relief in my community. Um, I saw Halloween decorations going up. I saw people walking safely and without fear on my street. It's Christmas. I have neighbors that I see putting out decorations, and it's such a relief to see a community that is able to bond after two years of living in fear, and this would not have happened had Sheriff Hall not taken an interest. Oh, oh. And I've had the opportunity to thank Mr. Barrett, but I haven't had the opportunity to thank Darren Hall. Oh, oh. And he promised connection and a liaison that would communicate with the, my community, something my councilman had promised and never done. And your community liaison did everything you said he would do. So I'd also like to thank Kim and I wish you a safe and happy holiday. And thank you from the East Nashville community from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you. Right. Oh, well, wow. and thank you so much for calling. That was very nice to hear. Well, I was just telling my son last night that it's all about trying to do something for somebody, and that, that makes that makes my Christmas. I'm glad to hear that you, um, you know, that it's working out. It's a very uh, very difficult situation, and mm -hmm. she tried for years to to get uh, someone evicted and, and kind of a, a, a home over there that was that was um, drug used and, right. and abused with with various folks in and out of it. And that was causing some some value problems in their neighborhood, and obviously she was very frustrated and had called in uh, on, on the show. And and uh, I want to give credit to to Chief John Taylor, who oversees our warrant division uh, mm -hmm. here in Nashville, and um, and civil warrants where we're trying to evict people for them. And so, uh, but Ann was very patient. She had been through a whole lot by the time we got involved, right. and uh, the police department. And 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 I'm I'm glad to say that. Hopefully that uh, she's going to have a better holidays makes makes my day. I'm glad to hear that. Absolutely, it's great to see everyone you know involved in the community trying to, to bridge everybody together, right. especially as Nashville continues to grow. I mean, that's got to be quite the undertaking too. Yeah, you can imagine if you're paying your house or have paid for your house, and this home over here has got problems causing right. your value of your home and your safety and security in your your neighborhood. So um, that that means everything to her, and I'm, I'm just really glad it, it's worked out, and I'll surely pass the word on. So. Absolutely. Well, thanks again for calling in. Uh, yeah. Right now we have Willie on line two. Good morning. Good morning, Willie. What's your question? My question is uh, for the sheriff. I spoke to him. Uh, I spoke to him in a, a veterans parade downtown. He's riding in the car. Yeah. I and the mayor going down, <laughs> hollering at me, waved. I didn't know why he wasn't walking. But <laughs> I can't understand why he didn't try to get the land, the old Cocker Bend land, for the new jail. I think he's he personalized it, try, put it out to the Antioch instead of trying to get the. Cockerbill land, uh, he could have saved the city and the state a lot of money instead of trying to stay downtown in Antioch. I don't understand why he didn't do that since it's closed. It's already got the resources there. It's, uh, it's on for that. So I don't understand why he didn't he didn't do that. All right. Well, yeah, Willie, I, I did see you. I, I didn't see you walking in. I, I waved at you, but uh, um, yeah, I could have. And, and and at times have have, have walked to the TSU parade. We, we walk, and sometimes the Christmas parade and Veterans Parade. But uh, uh, maybe maybe you caught me in the car that day. Um, the the move of our facilities is, is very complicated. The bottom line is two thirds of what we already do is located in in the Antioch area, the southeast Nashville. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of moving one third of it to where we already are located was the most cost effective and really the best thing to do. Um, what Willie's talking about is the state of Tennessee owns property at the Cockrell Bend site and um, so you would have to negotiate with the state of Tennessee right. to get the land and then you'd have to move everything we do to one location and that just doesn't make very good sense and so a very expensive way to do it and um, 
you know, quite frankly, I don't really care where we end up as long as we were centralized. Right. But it made more sense to move one third of it to where everything else is than to pack everything up and move out to Cockrell Bend. So, uh, uh, you know, and, and again, I, I don't, uh, I, hopefully in the end, now that the council has spoken, the, the community has spoken, we're going to build something downtown. And, uh, and then maintain those those areas out in southeast as well. So. Absolutely. A lot of factors to keep in mind when you're balancing budgets, you're trying to be as cost effective as possible. It's got to be a lot of work, quite the undertaking. Yeah, you. that, that was a, uh, a year of my life that I won't ever get back. Um, it, it was a lot of work uh, trying to put together, you know, the plans and, and, then, and then obviously put forth, uh, you know, the best solution we, we thought. And mm -hmm. with the elections of the mayor and the city council going on, there was other confusions and things with uh, the flood wall and all sorts of things right. that were happening. It kind of got lost, and it was very complicated for folks. And uh, we spent a lot of time, a lot of money. I mean, mm -hmm. the city really spent a lot of money doing that. And so, but now the the, the will of the of the government and the public are, is in in place, and we are um, we're, we're designing or are hopefully going to design a, a downtown facility and get that building replaced. It's in really bad shape, and right. uh, hopefully that'll that'll get us to the next generation of the problem. We'll, we'll just keep working at it. Absolutely. All right. Well, Mike joins us now on line three. Good morning, Mike. What's your question? Hey, my question is, uh, I would like to ask the sheriff there, uh, through my church, if I got something going in Nashville with a homeless, like a new building for them to come and stay and, and help them get jobs and education, my question is, once I got it in place and everything, I'd like to maybe know if they would come down for the holiday, maybe help me give out presents to the homeless or help maybe do a meal if I provided the food and everything, uh. you know, to give back to the community. Because I live in Waverly, Tennessee, and we come up every weekend and do it, and uh, we're actually trying to get a new building and stuff. And I would like to also commend the sheriff for taking care of everybody's safety during the holiday and uh, keep up the great work. And I wish you guys a Merry Christmas up that way. And my question also is, if, if I once I got up to Nashville, if I could come by and maybe just have about five minutes of his time and speak with him and tell him what I'm trying to do and... Uh, which we got a building in place and work out something we could do together and make a difference in Nashville when I'll hang up. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, thanks, Mike. That's why Nashville's such a great place because mm -hmm. people like Mike. I, I tell you, that's um, yeah. We will do. We we don't say no. Uh, and and he's he's interested in helping people. About 20% of the people who come in and out of the jails are homeless. And right. what's very sad to watch is that when they finish their responsibilities with us, they have nowhere to go a lot of times. And and so uh, Mike's out trying to come up with alternatives to help that. It sounds like, and we'll do anything and everything we can. Um, very creative. It sounds like what he's up to. And. Um, Mike, you give me a call, give me my office, I'll give you the number. It's it's 615-862-8166. Uh, that's my direct number. And uh, after the holidays, if you give me a call, I'd love to sit down with you and talk about what uh, you know what, what you want to do and what we can do to help you. All right. And the homeless problem, I mean, you know, it's got to be tough to see, you know, mm -hmm. the cyclical issues, you know, with, with the homeless, you know, once they yeah, get out of jail or, you know, they get back into Yeah, it. and to be honest, there's other issues usually intertwined. You have right. addiction, you have mental health going on, you have a lot of other um, uh, kind of complicated social issues that um, that if, if they, uh, there was a residence or a place, to, uh, you can really provide better services than you can in a jail. It's really not the best situation to do that. And right. so I'd love to see alternatives to that. You're still going to have people that are homeless that would come to jail probably, but We'd like to see that as an alternative when they get released, that there's a place for them to go that's not right back into the streets. And it um, uh, sounds like Mike is up to some really yeah. good things and uh, won't, won't be a part of that. So look forward Absolutely. to hearing from you. Yeah, thanks, Mike, for calling us. Shelby is joining us now. Good morning, Shelby. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. Um, my question for the sheriff is about um, cameras that I have seen around Nashville um, on the interstates on 440, on Briley 40, and then Ellington Parkway. They, they don't appear to be traffic cameras. Um, they're very tall, and they have, like, the dome, like, globe-type cameras on them. So I just want to know, what are they for, um, and whose are they? Good question. Yeah, let me, uh, let me say right off the bat, I can't tell you for sure because I, I can tell you what I think uh, right. if, if it's the ones that I'm thinking of you know TDOT Department of Transportation does a lot of those uh, for various reasons traffic and and, and other things um, so I suspect that's what you're mm -hmm. talking about I think it's pretty fascinating myself to get up and you know they used to tell you where the traffic problems were in right. town and now they show it to you almost uh, every every morning on all the networks but I think that's what you're talking about a lot of times you have um, the the state because the state would be responsible for the highways and um, 
uh, have those those towers that are really used for that. Now, I, I can't promise that, but I, I would right. I would think that's what you're talking about. That's probably what it is. I mean, it's a huge help to us, too, especially right. on the morning show when you hear about a car accident or some sort of traffic issue. You can link to those cameras and see it, what it looks like because they got several cameras all along all the major interstates. But that's definitely something I think TDOT, the uh, Department of Transportation, is in control of, I would say. I don't think it would be anything that you guys Yeah, and, I, and me, you know, yeah, it's definitely not Metro and it's definitely not us. Um, I, I, what right. I would say is it's also used to, to warn you of things ahead of you. You see the, the messaging that's on the boards mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, a lot of that information comes from different things. It tells you how far out and, and so forth. But uh, I, I bet that's what you're talking about. And it's usually in an area like this. You probably won't find those in a, in a more rural area once you get out of town. But um, um, camera, I thought she was going to actually ask about uh, the cameras in the downtown area. There's... Um, you know, you'll see the blue light kind of blinking, and mm -hmm. those are cameras used by the police department, and there's others, you know, located. And uh, there aren't very many places anymore that aren't videoed somehow, you right. know, uh, recorded through something, and whether that's the government or uh, if you have a teenager, you know what I'm talking about, but they video everything that happens, so you, well, some, somewhere you can gather the information. So. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for all the calls we've gotten so far. We definitely have a lot more time left, so if you do have a question or a comment, definitely give us a call at 737-PLUS. Meanwhile, we are going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back.